What's up guys, Manny from Water Million and this is the first 2023 RC8C in the United States. So guys, if you guys are sitting there scratching your head thinking what this is, this is a track monster by KTM. It's the 2023 model of the RC8C. There was one more that they made in 2021. It is a little different than this. It looks exactly the same, but they made some updates on this. First of all, the biggest update was the engine. The power output is more now. It's 135 horsepower at 11,000 RPM. I believe it's around seven horsepower more than the previous model. And they only made a hundred of them. In 2021, now they made 200. This thing sold out in three minutes when they launched it. And you have to kind of get in the line to buy it or to get the link to be able to buy it when they released it. The engine is based out of, out of the KTM 890 engines that you see in the Duke models. It's been reworked and over the 2021 model year, they've added the full titanium exhaust. They added the titanium valves. They did some head work. I believe the, the ports on the heads are reworked so that it flows better, that it's making more power now. Other than that, this thing looks like a mini MotoGP machine with the winglet and everything. And I was just in Austin for the Circuit of the Americas MotoGP. And if you take a look at the KTMs that are running in MotoGP, this is like a little slim version of it. I don't know if it comes out on camera, but this thing is really compact and small. We're used to the super bikes that we do. And when you put them side by side, you see how small and slim this is. And in the aero department, they're running the front wings. It looks exactly the same thing as the MotoGP bikes. And KTM says it's not just for downforce to keep the front down, but it also makes the rear stable. And talking about the back and, and aero, if you take a look over here, this has a little scoop right down here. And this was first used by Ducati a couple years back in terms of aero, and it caused a lot of controversy and a lot of teams protested it, saying that it's not within the rules. And now almost all teams run it. And the purpose of the scoop, they said, was to cool down the rear tire. And also some were speculating that it was to keep the back end down while you're braking so that if you ever watch MotoGP, you see that they'll start doing endos and the back gets light when you're braking. And since we're here, it's got an Akrapovic exhaust, as I mentioned. We love Akrapovic. It's one of the only exhaust systems that we sell other than Aero. They're both amazing. They're both great. And if you look at the rear sets, this bike is completely adjustable for the ergonomics of the rider. So it doesn't matter your, your shape or size. This thing is adjustable and that's what they're made for because you want to take it on track and you're really com comfortable. So the handlebars are adjustable. I believe it's 35 degrees of adjustment that you could pull them in and pull them out. It has dials and, and marks everywhere. Also, the seating position is adjustable as well to get you all comfortable and right to go down the track as fast as you want us, as fast as you feel safe. In terms of body protection, it's running the frame sliders and it has some engine case covers on it built in as well. And the suspension, it's, it's WP, as you know, in MotoGP field, everyone runs Olin's except KTM. And I think they've stayed loyal to their brands that they work with. It has WP suspension. And you're wondering what does WP stands for? Because that's what I wondered when I saw them. I'm not making this up, WP stands for white power. And don't get me wrong, it's not political statement or hate speech of any kind. It, there's a story behind it. WP was based in Netherlands and the only powder coating shop in their town used to powder coat them in white. Why white? Because they used to powder coat the bed frames of the hospitals. And the name came from the springs because the springs had to be powder coated and it was white. And they, they used to call it white power suspension. Now they've abbreviated to WP, you probably, can guess why, but that's the name behind the suspension. It's the Apex Pro front forks and Apex Pro rear shock, and also the Apex Pro steering damper that this thing runs. And in terms of braking, these are very familiar. They're the Stylema calipers. We love them. And they run the Corsa Corta master cylinder over here. It's, I guess it's the best in business and it has an underslung rear setup with a two piston caliper in the back. And if you take a look over here, it's running a brake lever guard and not a clutch lever guard because we get this question asked sometimes, why are we just running a single brake lever guard? So the brake lever guard, what does it do? It's not a crash protection piece, but it is to prevent you from crashing. It is now almost mandatory with all racing sanctioning bodies. It's to protect your brake lever in, in case of accidental impact because in racing, you do get close 
to a lot of people and if you hit your front brake lever, you know what's gonna happen. Your bike's gonna do an endo and this is what it protects. And that's why it kind of is pointless to run it on the clutch side unless you really want that symmetry. Now going to racing, this thing has all kinds of electronics on it. Everything that you'd expect from a race bike and a track bike. It is running these MotoGP buttons that gives you all access to your traction control, engine braking control, your wheelie control, your pit speed limiter, and your start stop buttons. And the whole electronics are provided by AIM. And it even has a GPS lap timer because obviously you want to know your lap time since this is a track made machine. And one thing I want to show you that's really cool and familiar is the fuel cap. It is a TWM fuel cap. The quick action fuel cap that they invented is on this bike as well. It was invented for the racing world and this is why it's on here. But you're probably wondering why is the fuel cap at the back of the bike and not over here? So the optimal position for the fuel tank for race bikes is right under here. It keeps the center of gravity low, but also it gives you a lot of room to play around with your airbox to give you the power characteristics that you want. And when you look at this bike, I, I just can't get my eyes off of it. It's, it's just crazy. And it has these uh, squiggly lines over here, which I believe is probably for aero as well. But one other thing that's derived from the racing world is this rain light over here. I believe it's required by some sanctioning bodies and if you're running this bike on the, on the track in the rain, you have to have it. And the cool part about it is it's actually a button too. So you turn it on by holding it down like this and it has different flashes. Again, I think it's a, it's a sanctioning body thing. Some track riders or some track organizations want it to flash a certain way so you can cycle through it just like this. And as you see, it flashes differently and you'll hold it down and it will just turn it off. And if you take a look at the wheels, they're forged aluminum wheels by Dimag. And uh, it's just amazing to see such a machine. And it's a privilege to have this machine with us over here. And if you're wondering what we're gonna do with it, unfortunately, I'm not gonna get to ride it on track. That's for another bike. Maybe you guys will see it on our videos, but this machine is for sale. If you guys are watching the video and we still have it, just shoot us an email. And if you're interested in buying it, we'll let you know the details in the email. But I know what you guys are thinking. You guys want to hear this parallel twin. This is not a V-twin engine. It's a two-cylinder parallel or an inline two, if you want to call it. You probably want to hear how it sounds like. Let me show you how you turn it on. There is a hidden button right down here in the front, right under the dash. You flick the switch and your bike comes alive. All the electronics turn on and it does all this cool graphics logo here saying RCHC. And we're used to these MotoGP style buttons because as you know, I'm a big fan of them just because being such a racing fan. This will turn on your fuel pump. This gives you the ignition power. And this is how you start it. You guys are ready? So guys, I'm not gonna rev it too much. We let it warm up and we revved it a little bit for you guys. It's, uh, that was only 7,000 RPM. And let me tell you something, it still has a DB killer on the bike. It's, it, I can't imagine how loud it would be. You probably can't take this onto some racetracks without that DB killer. But overall, this is the 313 pound lightweight track bike. I think it's so amazing and so cool to have it here and see it around because again, like I said, I'm a huge MotoGP fan and this looks like a tiny little MotoGP machine. And some of you guys have been asking, what are these mats and where do we get them from? We'll put a link in the description for you guys, especially if some of you RCHC guys are watching. 
that orange color matches this beautiful bike really well and you probably want to have them in your pits or in your garage where you store your beautiful machine. And if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Until next time, guys, have a good one.